السلام عليكم ورحمة الله بسم الله الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله السلام عليكم to all of you all praises and thanks to Almighty Allah سبحانه وتعالى and after that peace and blessings on the noble prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم peace peace and blessings be upon him and I testify that there is none worthy of worship except Almighty God Allah alone and I testify that Muhammad peace be upon him is his final messenger and his humble slave having said that I would begin inshallah with a beautiful message of the Quran concerning our topic which is Salah and specifically five Salat five uh, Salawat al-Khamsa five daily prayers A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem Bismillah Rahman Allah SWT says in the Surah called the believers. I believe the number of the surah is 23, but it's juz number 18 of the Quran. He says, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنِ اللَّغْوِ مُعْرِضُونَ He says, indeed, the believers are successful. They are those people who are sincere in their prayers, and they stay away from all the useless things, all the love of or useless things, things that are of no benefit or good. Uh, for our this life or the next life having said that our topic of concern is connected with salah why salah to understand salah first we have to understand that in the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given such an emphasis on salah that anywhere there's something good mentioned it begins with salah for instance uh, Moses Musa peace be upon him he's technically speaking he's not someone that Muslims look up to but Allah SWT is putting a case here that even Moses when God spoke to him when God spoke to him first thing God told him Musa pray for my remembrance you, you have to pray for my remembrance first conversation first dialogue Prophet of Allah Prophet Muhammad when God shows him as a prophet first thing that he is taught after the first revelation is that Gabriel comes and he teaches him these five prayers. So there must be something behind it. Behind it. So to understand that, we have to understand first the philosophy of our existence. Who are we? You know, this is a very basic and simple question. And Alhamdulillah, our faith, Iman, that's why Allah says these believers are successful. Not someone just with a degree, with a diploma, with a material success. Allah says we have to know this that believers are successful. What kind of believers are they? Someone who does believe that God Almighty is a creator of all things. He's a sustainer. He's a provider. So I should know who I am. I am a creation of God. And that God with his infinite wisdom who created all beings, he also taught us or revealed us through our uh, existing nature, our innate uh, existence and the cosmos around us that teaches us what's good and what's bad the good and bad and then the third thing that is part of all this declaration is that we must understand that after what we're supposed to do what we're not supposed to do we will be standing in a court where there will be a judgment if a person does not have these three basics this won't make any sense this only makes sense after someone believes in one God after someone understands that my success in this life is only material, is only superficial, if, if I don't have that realization, that act, moment of actual, actualization that I am God's creation, He is the, He's a wise creator of not just me, but everything that is around. Nothing is haphazard. Not, nothing is a random existence. All of this is part of his greater plan. And then not only that, he instructed all these beings, whether it's the planets or the galaxies or the stars or the moons, whatever it is, or just planet Earth, us, our world. Everything is being instructed, has certain set of instructions of what they do and what they're not supposed to do. Similarly, how could it be that we humans are worse than animals, that we don't know what to do? We don't know what's expected of us? Yes, we also have this code of instructions. And last point, third, remember three points I've mentioned here that is part of our faith, basic Iman, basic Islam, 
that I am going to stand before my Creator on the Day of Judgment and I shall be asked, I shall be held accountable in this, uh, in the, and there will be a form of either reward or a punishment. That is the day when people will know whether they are really successful or they're losers. That day, anyone who has this little success will consider himself to be the most lucky, most uh, happy, most blessed. Whereas someone who has this little, even if let's say a few minutes of penalty, it's like you're doing time for like a day or half a day or half an hour in hell, person will think himself, of himself or herself. They will think that they are the most miserable ones. This is Islam. That's Iman. This Iman requires us to do Salah. Actually, if we think about all the existence that is around us, look at the uh, plants or plantations or animals or any creation that you see, they all follow and obey a certain law, a certain code. If, if God wanted, He would have had us do not just five prayers. Actually, he, we could have had the instruction of doing prayers for 24, 7, 365 because we are His creation, so we don't have a choice. If, let's say, we were asked to do this all the time, we would not have a choice but to do it. That is the message behind. Now, what is Salah? Let's understand today a very... So, first we understand that why Salah? Why Salah is to be done? Salah is to be done because this is a requirement of our faith. First requirement. First requirement that if I believe, if I do believe what I just told you about faith, then I have to manifest that faith through prayer. That's number one thing. That's number one why. Um, and and, and, and uh, uh, this is the least I can do, actually. In fact, my whole life should be obedience of God and not the disobedience. Stay away from disobedience. So that's why there is prayer. That's why there is salah. Now, there is many, many forms of salah. We're focusing only on five prayers. Okay, And we have to understand what actually the word salah literally means. Okay, So it's important to understand the word salah. So we're going to learn... What is Salah literally? Meaning of Salah. Number one. And why five Salah? Why five? Why not like one? One in a whole day, right? Or why not um, five instead of five fifty? <laughs> or why not ten? Why five? This is important. That's a very critical one to understand because a lot of new Muslims, so hopefully this will be a basic guide for uh, young people, those who are learning to do Salah, um, new Muslims, inshallah, especially, they will find it very useful. So all Muslims, inshallah, in general. And I'm telling you, a lot of even everyday Muslims who are born and raised Muslims, they may not know what what's even Salah is. They will just know the basic, I told you, oh, we are Muslims, we have to pray. But what is the real meaning? What's the meaning behind this word? Why five? Okay, these I'm talking about the pillars of Islam, the five pillars of Islam. After I testify, after I declare my Islam that I just declared before you, my iman, my faith, that who am I and what all of that, and what am I supposed to do, and and why I'm doing this because I will be I'll be standing in that ultimate place where the eternal, uh, absolute, never-ending life is. Yes, that's faith. So a Muslim may be able to explain all of that. Maybe, maybe a lot of us take our faith for granted. But what is the real meaning behind this? Uh, the meaning of even the word Salah. Why five? Okay. And how these five prayers are done. Okay. So why and then what, when, how. These are, these, this is like a whole, you could do a course on this on all of these steps. So let's cover first these, inshallah ta'ala. So meaning of salah. The word salah literally, what does it mean? Translators would just say prayer. I'll tell you how translations are not very helpful here. Now, when I tell you, let's say, this is very common actually in almost every culture, especially Judeo-Christian Islamic culture is very common. Please pray for me. I'm, I have a tough exam tomorrow. Can you please pray for me? You say, yeah, I will pray for you. No, you won't. <laughs> yeah, please pray for me, right? Don't we say that? 
What's the word for that prayer? When I say, please pray for me. Yeah. We say a word. Yeah. Yeah, right? Please do dua for me. So, when I say pray for me, we use the word actually dua. And when we say five prayers, we say salah. See how they're different? But in our common language, in everyday language, what are we always saying? Prayer. Prayer. It's time to pray. Prayer. Pray for me. Pray for this. Pray for that. So everything is all prayer. Yet they're not all same. So salah, dua, these are two different words. You see what I'm saying? So the word for salah that Allah has instructed us, God instructed Musa, God instructed every prophet of him. See, the message is the same. Notice, from Adam till Muhammad, every prophet was told to do one thing after they declared that their iman or their salah, or after they received a revelation from God, pray. Every prophet was praying. Musa, imagine Musa was told to pray. So it's different. It's not the same. So translations do not help. They would simply say, pray, pray for everything. Pray, uh, invocation. See, the actual word is invocation. Invocation is part of this bigger umbrella, the bigger concept, which is called salah. All of them can be called salah, no problem. But they all have these specific areas, like it could be dua, it could be salah toward the Prophet. We say the same thing. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Salah toward Allah. So the basic, very basic meaning of salah is to incline. To incline. To incline. Is it, did I spell it correct? Incline. Inclination towards some being. In our case, because we're Muslims, we believe in one God, we must show that in every walk of life that we only ask Allah for everything. That's why we say pray for me. It's not wrong to say pray for me, but the better word is please do dua for me. It's okay, both are correct. But the idea behind the word salah is, that's why I said they all come under the umbrella of the word salah. So the word salah means to incline to pay attention to, to, to connect with, to speak to. This is all meaning of salah. Does it make sense? So that basic definition, the dictionary meaning is to incline. And when we understand that, we will understand, inshallah, that uh, um, to make dua for someone or for yourself is also to incline toward God. And then Allah says in the Quran, I also say salah on you. God pays attention to you, that is also salah. It makes sense now. God's mercy, He says, I send salawat on my believers. I send salah on my believers. Does that mean God is praying to us? No. See, the word prayer is not a proper transition of the salah. Because when God sends salah on us, what does that mean? He pays attention to it. Uh, he always has attention toward us, but he gives a special attention in reward of what we did or in reward of or in love, in, 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 in special care for his believers, for his servants. Make sense? So what is salah on Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Salah on the Prophet does not mean that we pray to him. Salah means we pray for him. We, yes, we do pay attention on his personality, but we are actually asking Allah, Allah, this prophet of yours who has taught us all of this, who has told us to, to be your believers, we ask you to bless him. Again, to incline. See, the word salah is very critical. So salah ala nabi, salah upon the prophet, also means that you would be inclining toward his personality, but not in worship. You're actually saying, Allah, we ask you to give special, special mercy of yours. You're already merciful. So Allah says, huh, you think you're only merciful? You think you're showing that gratitude? Let me show you a bigger gratitude and we actually get blessings in return. Because, you know, in Islam, there's a rule that when you pray for somebody, Allah sends an angel to pray on you. So actually, it is a win-win for us. We are the ones who are getting benefit from that. We actually get Allah's attention because of salah on the Prophet or because of a dua for anybody. Let's say I pray for you, pray for you. 
or dua for you, what will happen? Allah will send salah on me. So imagine if I prayed for the Prophet. Oof, that's huge. I'll say, you're praying for my Prophet? For my most beloved of the creation? Angels go deliver my mercies on him. So 10 special mercies come down. So this is the basic meaning of the word salah, to incline. Why five salah? These five prayers that are a requirement of Islam. Remember, Prophet said, Buni al Islam wa ala khams. Authentic hadith, Bukhari, Muslim, all, all books of Islam, uh, hadith, they explain. Does it have anything to do with salah, uh, with the Quran? Yes, Allah says in the Quran, He orders us, Wa aqim is salah, tarafayin nahar, wa zulafam min al layl. It covers, actually, Quran covers five times. That on the sides of the day and on the bottoms of the night. It covers 24 hours. So he says, establish salah. So it is his order actually, number one reason. I always say first reason is, it's his order. It says, tarafayin nahar wa zulafam min al layl. Like the Quran. Nahar, day, night. Isn't that something? He says, establish prayer on the sides of the day and towards the night. Zulafam min al-layl. Covers all five. This is in the Quran. And there is others also where, uh, other ayat where actually, aqim uh, salah another one. Li duluk shamsi ila ghasaq al-layl. Duluk shams ila ghasaq al-layl. Wa Quran al-fajr. This is another one. This is even more... Uh, I would say even more powerful ayah, the number of the ayah is, this one is in Surah Al-Isra. Yeah, he says, Let me look at the ayah number. It's a very powerful one. So it covers all five prayers. One, I said, This is in Surah Al-Hud, uh, Juz number 12. I'm not sure about the number of the Surah, but Juz number 12 of the Quran. And this one is number 78. So one is Surah Hud. So yes, there is five prayers in the Quran. You have Muslims very casually, they say, ah, five prayers are not in the Quran. The Astaghfirullah, especially in the West, we have this um, new uh, virus, a new virus, modern virus, where people say, oh, there's no five prayers in the Quran, so you don't have to do five prayers. Man, these Astaghfirullah, and they say, ah, I, I'm, a, I'm a progressive Muslim. There's no such thing as progressive Muslim or this Muslim. Muslim is Muslim. And Muslim means someone, what is Muslim? The one who has submitted, surrendered before one God. That is a Muslim. That's a Muslim. There's no uh, progressive, liberal, conservative, blah, blah, blah. These are modern names that Muslims are actually stealing, unfortunately, from the West. Very sadly. It's like being copycats. The Muslim is Muslim, whether you practice or you don't practice. You know, I remember when I grew up, whether I met people from the West or not from the West, if someone did not pray, they would say, you know, please make dua for me. Pray for me that I pray. You know what I'm saying? Please make dua for me that I pray. It's my weakness of Iman. Either you're a practicing Muslim or you're not a practicing Muslim, or you're trying to do both. <laughs> practicing, not practicing, you're trying your best. Nobody's 100%, all right? So that's the idea. So that never listen to anybody who says, oh, uh, there's no five prayers in the Quran. Okay, even if there was no five prayers in the Quran, so what? Even if they were not, so what? Isn't Prophet Muhammad is our teacher? God says pray. Prophet will tell you how much, how many, when, and all of that, all the nitty gritty details, all the uh, pluses and minuses and everything. Prophet would teach us. But for the sake of the argument, Quran has them covered. Quran has actually mentioned prayers by name. Some prayers by name are mentioned. So this is a very powerful evidence. So first is Surah Hud. Can you check the number of Surah Hud? Is it Surah number 12 or 13? Hud. H-U-D Hud. Prophet Hud alayhi salam. This one I have is Surah Al-Isra. Uh, so Isra. Number 11. Okay, Hud is number 11. And Isra is number... 15 uh, or 16? 17. Oh, 17. Astaghfirullah. Okay. Number 17. Surah number 17. Al-Isra, Juz 15. And the ayah is 78. Ba'da'uzu billah min shaitan rajim. Five prayers. Why five? 
So first reason, it's in the Quran. Allah has commanded us. أَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ لِدُلُوكِ الشَّمْسِ إِلَىٰ غَسَقِ اللَّيْلِ وَقُرْآنَ الْفَجْرِ You heard the name Fajr? إِنَّ قُرْآنَ الْفَجْرِ كَانَ مَشْهُودًا Allah says, observe the prayer from the sun declining. Okay, لِدُلُوكِ الشَّمْسِ So, declining, from the sun declining from the meridian to the darkening of the night and recitation of the night. So, sun declining and to the darkening of the night. So, the decline of sun to the darkness of night. And then he mentions Fajr. Wa Quran al Fajr. So, pray from the decline of the sun to the darkness of the night until Fajr. Guess what? This covers all five prayers. Uh, the ayah number is, what's the ayah number? 78, right? 78. Ya Allah. These are just mandatory, five daily prayers. How it's five? Let's understand. So decline of the sun, darkness of night, and fajr. So it is ayah number 78, right? 78 surah Isra. When does the sun decline? Duluk. That's Dhuhr. That's Dhuhr. Or you can say Dhuhr and Asr. Both start after Duluk. The minute sun starts to decline, like midday, the minute it declines, Dhuhr, Asr. It's kind of early. We're coming here. What, when, and how. But Quran has already told us. We just have to uh, what do you call it? Decode it or unpack it. Unpack it. Okay. So decline of the sun. Sun is in the middle of the sky. The minute it declines, Dhuhr begins. Asr. Darkness of night is Maghrib and Isha. This one is covered in the frame of the video. It's coming. Okay. Isha. And then this is Fajr. How many? Count them. So. One, two, three, four, five. All five are mentioned. Clear? After the Lucas Shams, if Prophet wasn't merciful on us, he could have had us do 50 prayers because from decline of the sun until darkness of the night in long days, it's like at least nine hours in the West here or even any countries near the equator you could have about seven to eight or seven to nine hours, you know, near the equator line, where the normal day and night, 12 day, 12 hour day, uh, day and night. This is mercy, actually, that Prophet told us. No, it means these two. Night means the dark and full night. And then dawn, Fajr. It covers all five. Yes, Prophet unpacked it for us. But even if you didn't, if you'd say, no, I will pray as I want, I don't want five, then you have to do like 50. <laughs> it will be a lot. Think about it. Because he says, pray from here to here, here to here. There's no break in between actually. So this is actually Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he said, Buni al-Islamu ala khams. Islam is founded on five things, five pillars of Islam. Number one is that you testify there's one God and none worthy of worship except Allah and Muhammad is his final messenger, two with testimonies. Number one, number two is five daily prayers, right? Five daily prayers, five daily prayers. Then he said, uh, zakat, uh, um, zakat, charity. Required, mandatory, if you have certain earnings uh, saved and all that, uh, four ounces of gold equal or above, then uh, fasting once in a year for 30 days, and Isha, uh, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, the Hajj, if you have uh, enough means to do it physically and uh, health-wise and wealth-wise. Five pillars of Islam. The Prophet told us this, and uh, according to the, the most critical pillar of Islam, which is actually something that everybody has to practice. This is the one where you're rich or poor, young or old. As soon as he says you get seven, you have to start teaching yourself or your kid. Uh, this is a time to pray. Everybody has to pray. There's no exception. Even if you're sick, there are ways to pray a short prayer because 
Why five? Because 24 seven, 365, even if we were all, always from day to night, 24 hours, 7, 365, there is countless blessings that God has given us. There is, uh, from the moment we open our eyes till, till we go to our graves, we are constantly in his favor, constantly. So if we were constantly thanking him, it wouldn't still be enough. We were not born without a choice. We were, uh, we could, if he wanted us to not breathe, if he stopped his air for us to breathe in, we would stop. We would, our existence would cease. So every moment is there to thank him. So five is actually nothing. In fact, the way these five times are divided, the, the, the middle of the daytime and the evening time and the darkness and the early morning, these times are actually, and they have, each have certain psychological effect. These are certain moments where people are in different moods and different state of mind. Each state of mind gets a guidance of revelation that makes sure you are his creation. Make sure you're going back to him. This is a constant reminder. It's like five times making a phone call. So I will stop here, inshallah ta'ala. After salah, we come back and we'll finish what, when, and how. Uh, remember, why five salah is the most critical thing that people a lot, a lot of time can't grapple around. This has a lot of depth to it. The key thing is us humans have different state of minds. Uh, like look at the morning time. The reason we do morning prayer, and he says this is the time in the Quran al Fajri Kana Mashuda, the angels of night and day both come and witness this prayer. When we start our day with this salah, what happens? I know that I am going for living, I'm going for my job, I'm going for my work, but after, first I thank him, the one who gave me this new day, the one who gave me a new life to start, a new chapter to begin. How could I not thank him because I could have slept and never woke up? My body forces me to thank him. When I go to the bathroom, I wash myself and wash my face. What's left? I have to thank him. I have to thank him. So this is, that's why this time is very critical. Because if I don't begin my day with his name, it's like I've ignored him. I, uh, there's, I, I, you know, this day is a day of loss. It's like ignoring God from your existence, like as if you don't matter to me, as if you did not give it to me. I earned it myself. I was born myself. None of that was myself. I'm so dependent on him that I have to thank him and I have to ask him. That's why your du'as, your personal invocations are in your five prayers. Your five prayer is loaded with personal du'as, personal invocations. It's loaded with it. Inshallah, we'll come on that. So these times... A human being is in a different state of mind, different state of mood, different uh, thought processes that you are in this time versus this time. All of these are different. And why in the hustle and bustle of the day? And these are very short moments to remind you that don't get lost in this materialistic world. Don't go too far in this. Take a break. Take a moment. It's like, you know, when you're immersed in something so deep, take a deep breath, come out of it. So that you understand that this is not everything. This is not forever. This is only a test room. This is only an exam room. So that's why there's five prayers. They cover our 24-7, 365 cycle actually. Alhamdulillah. So we have covered this. Inshallah, we'll come on the last part after the prayer. Inshallah.